butterfly pea blossoms they're purple and the gin is supposed to be purple and it was the last time i checked what color is this and what does it mean and should i have not had some last night i'm erica also known as emonique and this is my real life Hang out with me as I side-eye the ups and stumble through the downs. Watch as I turn my tiny piece of the Arizona desert into a tropical oasis. Fight to beat infertility and figure out where I fit as an artist in this crazy creative world. All while awkwardly discovering my authentic self. I'll be talking out loud about the things I wish someone would have said a while ago and sorting through what I wish I didn't know. And who knows? Maybe you can relate as I often ask myself. Well, look who is wishing me a good morning. I know exactly who that is. Good morning, Grandma. I see you. <sighs> hey, I'm still crusty. I haven't, um, this is Lent, okay, on my shirt. It's Lent. But nonetheless, I'm still crusty because I'm just taking the morning really, really slow. I mean, really slow. I haven't had tea. I haven't watered my plants. I have not really picked up yet. I, I mean, and it's 1040. So, you know, um... I sat outside a bit, like when I woke up this morning, it was nice and cool. I sat outside a bit and, um, and like, I don't know, I've just been editing just a little bit. I started my podcast. I don't know what happened to it. I don't remember pausing it, but I started a podcast and like, I've just been sitting here quiet, peaceful, thinking trying to determine how I want my day to go, like what what is on my agenda for today. It is um, Thursday. And um, yeah, I'm just chill and relaxing. I was really, really um, blessed to see that rainbow this morning right outside my window. And it just, it literally, like it made me laugh and it made me smile because it's like, as soon as I open my curtains, there's a rainbow outside my window come on like that was so sweet and I like I said I know exactly who did that that was her but um I did not get to like I just didn't really feel like yesterday updating but my grandmother passed away um she so just quick quick recap that Tuesday that Tuesday, um, went up there, spent time with her at the hospital. Um, that like Monday night to Tuesday morning, she had a really, really rough time and it, she just got worse and they had her on like super oxygen the whole day. She was, um, she was asleep the whole time. Um, so it was just not, like between Monday and Tuesday was night and day. She had just gotten so much worse. And so we spent time with her at the hospital there and more family and people came to visit. But the hospital and social workers and people were just like, what do you, we need to start preparing for like, what do you guys want to do? So, and, and by that point, they were, they were really saying that 
because of the really bad turn that she took, we no longer had the option to take her home. So at this point, it is taking her, about taking her to inpatient hospice care. So it wasn't really like, what are you gonna, what do you guys want to do at that point? It's like, we're gonna come keep talk, we're going to keep talking to you about how it works and answer any questions and make sure you fully understand what's going to be happening next. And then um, we just had a couple other calls to make to confirm some things. And then after that, like um, paperwork was signed to go ahead and get her moved to inpatient hospice. And so that happened very quickly and like I said, I'm not sure if I meant... I don't think I update it. I don't know, honestly. Um, by the time we signed paperwork for them to come pick her up, um, they were like, well, you have about another two hours or so before that happens. So they understood that there were two simultaneous things happening. Uh, one of my aunts was flying in. And like, a, like the same time, like her plane was landing at four. And then my uncle was also in the hospital. He was downstairs, the same hospital downstairs in the emergency room. He needed to have emergency surgery. And he was pleading with them to um, come up, come up to my grandmother's room to see her before he went into surgery and or before she was transported to hospice. So we were hoping that we had at least majority of the afternoon to have those two things happen before they moved her. None of that happened. Um, they were Johnny on the spot on time. They were like, it's either going to happen between five and six. If it doesn't happen, then it's going to be after eight, 8 p.m. So just like with anything else, like you wait for the cable guy to come all day and you're like the last one on the list and they come at the very like you're waiting all day long and they come at the very last minute so we're just like well we'll probably have some time hoping for it right they were on time right at five o'clock ready to come transport tra transport her we were all kind of like looking at each other like are you kidding me like we're not ready yet we like her youngest child still needs to come up and see her and the other kid is on the way and it's just like okay so then they were like um if there's some way that someone can ride with her that would be really good it's not required but if it's possible you guys like we suggest someone ride with her just you know and i was like yeah that makes sense and so when we first discussed it, they were like, so who's going to ride with her? And I, and everybody was looking around and I was like, I'll ride with her. Like, obviously, just as long as someone figures out how to come get me, because we all drove our own cars to the hospital for flexibility. So it's like, if you, if I ride with her to the next city, someone is going to have to come up there with, eventually come up there to get me after I get her settled in to take me back to the hospital to get to my car so that I can go, right? That, I mean, that's no problem, but I was just like, yeah, I have no problem riding with her. But then he's like, the guy's like, okay. So we were all, they made us all come out of the room so that they could get her moved and ready. And so we were all in the hallway, just kind of like processing how quickly this was happening. And um, then I just thought, and I'm like, I'm acting like, my grandmother is my mother and I'm just like taking over. I'm like, she is my grandmother. Granted, that's that's the homie. However, she has four children and maybe they want to X, Y and Z. So just like really quick, because my aunt said that she was going to go back downstairs and check on my uncle and be there for him. And so then I was like, well, what is mom going to do? And so I was like, mom, if you want to ride with her, you can. And she was kind of struggling with that decision. I don't know what part of it, but I was just like, you should ride with her if you like, if you want, I don't want to take over. And she's just like, okay, I'll ride with her. And I was like, I'll make sure that, um, like, we're going to get you back here. Like, that's fine. That's no problem. 
And so the guys, they like got my grandmother ready in like 10 minutes, if that. Um, and they were like down the hall. He's like, so whichever one of you is going to ride with her, you may as well like come on with me because we're going to go right down. And I vaguely remember this with my dad. Um, they were transferring him to a rehab facility and they packed him up really quickly. And we like shot down the hallway super fast. And oh, the gardeners are here. It's Thursday. We shot down the hallway really fast, took a special elevator out the back somehow. And did I, I didn't, I didn't ride with him though. I just walked with him to transport and then I left. But anyways, same thing. They're like, it's weird. They're like quick with it. And so um, my mom grabbed her stuff really quick and followed them down to this special elevator. And we all go back in the room and it's just like, well, we're, it was just weird because it's like, once that person leaves the room, there's no reason for you to be in the room. Even though like our nurse, she was like, you guys take your time or whatever. And I'm, but we're in the room and I'm like, what is the point of us sitting in here? Grandma's gone. Uncle is downstairs. Like we just need to get our stuff and <laughs> reroute. So I grab my stuff and I'm like, okay, well, I'm not necessarily choosing to go to back down to the ER to do that whole thing. So I was like, I may as well follow my mom and my grandmother to the hospice facility, help her get her settled in. And then depending on if she's ready to come right back and get her car and go back or whatever, like I'll just be there to like have extra wheels. So I followed them. And it was like so weird following the ambulance. There was like two, it was so much activity in that area and I've never seen it before. There were, there was two ambulance headed in the same direction. One with my mom and my grandmother in it. And I guess one, I, maybe they were just headed that way to pick someone up. But it, that drive to the facility was so that kind of hit me hard because it didn't make sense to me. And this whole time I've been talking about how confused I've been and like just dealing. <laughs> but for me, it's like when you, when you leave the hospital, it's because you're better or you're well enough to go home you don't leave the hospital when you're still very, very sick or when you're dying. That feels wrong to me. And so for them to be taking my grandmother out of the hospital and she's not well and she's not opening her eyes and she's not responding felt very, very unnatural. And so, and then to be following her to another place was just like, no, where are you taking her? Like, I don't like this. So that that drive it was only like maybe 10 minutes but it was just like hard it was just hard and then so and then i also was just like not before i was not sold on this idea of like letting some strangers take care of her because i don't trust people like that as it is and i was like my grandmother is precious cargo like don't 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 you know what I mean and it's just like these people they don't know her or are they gonna take care of her in our face and then be all weird and crazy when we're not there because you just never know and but luckily everybody like her friends from church her co-workers other people that were there to see her that day they were all telling us like, this is a really, really good company. The place, the specific location that she's going to, we've all had experience with it. It's, hold on. It's all very, very nice. Like it's a nice building. The people are good. They were name dropping specific, oh shit. 
they were name dropping specific um, nurses that were there at that location that, you know, she was really good. You can trust her, all the things. So that made us feel better. Um, so just pulling up to this place was like, although I felt better about it, I was still kind of like leery, didn't know what to expect, all the things. Um, I'm distracted now because it just so happens this is day two of three that they are um, doing fire inspections and testing and they're setting the alarms off in each one of the buildings every single day like at random times and i'm terrified of fire alarms i hate them they scare me so much i do not like them i it disrupts my nervous system i hate to feel like scared or startled and so i've been preparing since yesterday when they're going to set my towers alarms off and i've been kind of like following the fire trucks because they've been in and out of here all day since yesterday and either i haven't been here for when they test tested my tower or they haven't done it yet but it just makes me so like i don't like it and so that's why i was like oh shit well one i heard fire alarms somewhere else. I don't know if it was this other building or where it was, but I heard it and it went off really quick. And then after that, I saw one of the fire trucks come back. I thought he was done for the day, but I just saw them come back and it's like, okay. Please don't make me scared. I don't want to feel that in my chest right now. Hate fire alarms. I wish there was another technology piece that could alert someone that there was a fire because I would sign up for that. I would. I really would. I know that they have some some sort of um, fire alarm for um, deaf people, but I think it's just lights. But it's like if it's at night and they're sleeping, what does that entail? You know what I mean? Anyways. So... Um, so we, we get to the, uh, or I get to the hospice facility um, and my oldest uncle and my aunt that was flying in were there already. Like, obviously they bypassed the hospital and came straight to the hospice place. So they were there already. Um, my mom and grandma had just gotten there and they were already in, or... My mom was sitting in with my aunt and uncle and they had taken my grandmother into her room and I guess were getting her ready. And so I sat in there with them and the place was nice. It was quiet. It was small. Um, the people introduced themselves to us. They were telling us what we could, all the things that we could do. There wasn't any couldn'ts like you can stay the night. You can, you know, use the common area. You can use the kitchen. You can do this. You can do that. Like, you could do whatever you want with your loved one. And it was like 24 hours access. Um, you need anything, you just ask them. And I was just like, wow, I didn't know. I didn't know about this, um, which was really cool. It made me feel even better. And we weren't there 15 minutes until my other aunt that was checking on my youngest uncle in the ER, she started walking up. So I was like, well, maybe they had already taken him to surgery or they had just taken him in or what have you, but she showed up pretty quick behind us all. So we're all sitting there talking, she's on the phone. And then when she comes in to tell us like what the heck happened, why they didn't bring him up, she went down there to check on him to the room that he was in and when she opened the curtain it was somebody else in there and so she asked the nurses like what the fuck and they're like oh well they took him into surgery and she's just like well why didn't anybody call us why didn't like what happened and like nobody had any answers for it but we were mostly worried about him because he really really wanted to see his mom before all of this happened and he didn't get to and so i'm not sure they spent all day yesterday at the hospital with him all the siblings wanted to tell him together in person because as soon as he woke up out of surgery yesterday morning 
he was asking and calling and trying to find out like how's she doing and everybody was beating around the bush they didn't want to tell him over the phone so all the siblings got together and and spent the time up there with him to talk with him and i don't know how that went so because i didn't go i didn't go up there i went to spend time with my brother who um took care of my grandmother lives with her and like took care of her so i just wanted to go up there and spend some time with him and pick his brain and just find out what you know if he was okay and we actually had a really i had a really good day with him we sat outside i brought i bought two watermelon big ass watermelons and i was anticipating for like everybody to eventually come back come home and we would just like split watermelon that didn't happen half the crew was over here half the crew was over there and then it was just me and him there all day and i was like well fuck it i'm hungry let's let's crack this open and um so we just sat outside it was like stormy and so it was like breezy and we just sat out on the porch and we talked and we ate watermelon and after that we had a drink and i was like all right i'm i'm tired bro i'm gonna head out of here and as soon as I like get on the highway into traffic, my mom calls and was like, where are you? We're headed home. I'm like, I'm going to go home. I'll see y'all tomorrow, which would be today. But uh, like, I'll see them eventually. It's just barely 11 o'clock and it'll be fine. But I say all that to say going back to Tuesday night, um, it was like we like the f family was all her kids except for the younger one were there i was there and then there were some more um of her old co-workers and family friends that came there to see her and we all just sat around and talked until like i left first about eight or nine o'clock p.m and then everybody else left but again, my aunt still had to take my mom back to the hospital to get her car. And they also wanted to check on my uncle because we weren't getting any word. And so when I got the update, I was like, so what was going on with him? They were like, he was in surgery for so long. They didn't leave the hospital until like after 10, close to 11. And then as soon as they got back home, then they got a call from the hospice place and the nurse was like sometimes loved ones wait until everybody has left before they like transition on and so that nurse the same night that she was transported that nurse was saying you know she had passed away so and i i i figured like i could just tell like when we were in the hospital and her breathing was so so out of control I, I could tell in her in her face, even though it looked just looked like she was sleeping, I could tell in her face that she was leaving and I could like she was getting cooler to the touch. And I was just like, Shh, this is going to happen really, really fast. And so um, I I had already said my goodbyes on Monday when she had her eyes open and she kept looking at me. That whole day that she had her eyes open, we, I, we were like, I was okay. And like, I knew that this was probably going to be it. Oh, they're washing our things finally. <sighs> Girl, the things that you see when you stay home from work um, during the week, you see how this place functions behind the scenes. It's dirty. Like, side note, right? We have um, this like our hallways and walkways are coated with this like coating they did that earlier this year and i was like good it'll make it easier for them to like clean this shit because like trash goo and just random goo and when it rains it leaves water spots in some of the areas that are like divoted and it's been looking really like grimy especially downstairs so I like that they're washing because this place is, it needs to be cleaned. Anyways. Um, and then when like we went in to see her, once they got her all ready at the hospice place, they put these cute little lobster pajamas on her. I was like, oh, that she would love those. She would think those were so cute. They put those on her. 
and we were all just kind of, you know, looking and I guess saying our last goodbyes. And I was just like, I already said my goodbyes. My grandmother is no longer, she's no longer here. She's not in this body. Her body is still alive, but it won't be for long. People are like, we probably have until the end of the week. And I was just like, we have until the end of the day. I could just tell. She's like, I was like, she's not going to be staying here longer. She doesn't want to be here. She said that to all of us. She did not want to be in hospice. She did not want to be a burden to anybody. She was working hard to say her goodbyes to as many people as possible. And then she was going to be out. And she did exactly that. She's like, I'm not spending the night here, bro. I'm out. Out of here. And she did. And my mom called me at like two in the morning to let me know. And I was just, I was okay with it. I was at peace. Cause again, like I already knew that she had gone. We already said our goodbyes. And, um, my mom called to let me know. And I was just like, okay. I went back to sleep and had a wonderful sleep. And, um, and like, I'm so at peace. Like I'm, I'm okay. My brother is okay, which is great. we um, we, we just talked and we reminisced and I was like, it's going to be sad. Like I'm incredibly sad that my grandmother is no longer here and I'm going to miss her. And it's going to, we're going to have waves of like really, really hard times, especially like with the holidays and things coming up and her not being here and her not telling us like all the foods that she wants to cook and eat and all the things that she wants to do. That's going to be hard having that silence. That's going to be hard having that emptiness where, we all go back to the to her bedroom to see her every single day and she's not there anymore like that's going to be hard but we're okay you know for the most part and we're more okay than we thought we would be which is an odd feeling and both like an amazing feeling like i'm so grateful she got us ready like i don't know how but she just subconsciously loved us enough talked to us enough was open enough, was candid enough, was honest enough about how she thought about things and how she wanted things and about us. And it just made us good and it made us secure and it made us like strong. And so we're okay. And uh, so, yeah, yesterday I just, I went up there to her house and spent time with my little brother all day. And today... I'm just taking it easy this morning. It's almost not morning anymore. But I'm a, I'm going to get cleaned up and I'm going to go out there and see what's up and spend some more time with family. So check and see cuz I don't have the update on my uncle to see how he is or anything like that. So we'll do that and um we have some services to plan and I want to help them with that and we still have other family like the rest of our little cousins. I don't I don't know how they're I'm sure that they know by now, but I don't know how they're dealing, so I want to be there to support them in case they're not okay. Uh, so yeah, support my mom and my aunts and uncles and yeah. Just do that, but that's the update. My grandma, she's gone. That's her right there. She is gone. So. Anyways, I'm going to get off here. Bye. Okay. I did a lot of my makeup already. I know you can't tell, but you're under the light. That's why. Whatever. Um... Let's speed this up because I'm already kind of running behind, but let me just put brows on really quick. Brows on and try not to jack it up. Try really hard. Yes, I still use a pencil and draw on my eyebrows. It's the easiest. Like, it hasn't failed me yet. That's all I have time for. I don't have time for brushes and powder and I don't even know how the fuck that works and I can control better because I'm drawing I know how I want them to be 
this kind of always happens right here. This one is like perfect, it's just short. So I'm gonna just fill that in a little bit. Be drawn because it's the short side. Ugh, I'll clean it up in a second. This side is the complete side, but it's always like angled weird. So let's fill that in. Am I a fool for putting on a full face today, including mascara top and bottom? Yeah, I think I am, but I'm also hoping that it will encourage me not to cry. Let's see if it works. Because if I cry, I'm gonna look jacked like a scary monster. So, like, I'm really trying not to cry until much later in the day. And I have, I have a whole day to get through. So, okay, let's see. So that's why I fill in a little bit above the line that I draw at the bottom because I take this brush and I kind of do a spread situation because I want the top to be like soft and feathery. The bottom can be sharp. I prefer it to be sharp. I almost feel like I need a, like a darker pencil these days. It's still, you can see my bald spot. Um, this is not good, hold on. Okay, now that I've like officially jacked it, clean it up a bit with some makeup. Just a little bit. Don't fuck this up, E. And I'm just going to leave that right there. Leave that there until it dries because you don't want to jack that up. It's really this side that I have beef with. So I think I got glue in my eye and I have contacts in. I started to put on lashes and when I put on this eye, right? And then when I put it on, I was like, ew. No, don't wear these. I don't know if they were too big or if it was the shock of like having lashes on because I haven't, I don't really wear lashes anymore, but I used to wear them tough all the time, every day. And so I don't know if it's like the shock of me wearing lashes for the first time in a long time, but I did not like it. So. I took that bad boy off and smudged the glue all over this eye and was like, don't you ever fucking do that again. I have a shaky hand on this side. I don't know what it is. Okay. And it's clumped. Clumped down here. What is downstairs' problem? Just because you have today off doesn't mean you can, like, make noise at 6 in the morning. Turn that fucking TV off. Oh, shit. I'm talking shit and fucked it up. Ugh. At least the bottom is how I want it to be. Okay, go back to this side. Go back to this side and blend that in to the rest of my lid. And then blend that. I need to hurry up because I still need to do my hair. This side might just have to be jacked. I won't mess with that corner yet. And maybe, hold on. <laughs> that gives it another angle, but now you're also in my way. You're in my way. You see how I jacked that up right here? Naturally. It's not thin on that side, so I really... I'm gonna have to do it over. 
So stop, blend that in and leave it alone because you're not gonna have to do that over. Just that side. Um, when you look at me from below like this, you get to see my bags, which is why I prefer to keep my face up because you can't. So we're angled in a better position to where you can see my face, but you can also see my bags. And I'd rather you see my nose than my bags. Um, cheeks, do I wanna do a lip? I need to see my hair first. <sighs> so I did pin curl my hair last night. I don't know if I told you that I mentioned, but I did pin curl it last night because I could not curl my hair this morning. Keep it light or go dark. Whiskey is always like a good idea. Is it? <laughs> no. No. Sit with this new one. That's pretty. She is legit blasting her TV right now. Did I just use the same pencil? Brows for my lips? Yes. Yes, I did. And? Get that off your teeth. How's that? Okay. Now let's get these pins out of here. I've got to hurry it along. I need to get my roller thing. My sweater is not as linty as the camera is picking up, but I do need to get my roller. I know that you're supposed to have oil on your hands when you do this. Give me a second, and then I just want to get all the pins out first. Plus, I sprayed it down last night before I got in the shower with oil. I don't want it to be too oily. I just want it to be shiny. Definitely don't want it oily. Also don't want it to be frizzy. <sighs> I'm tired. I didn't go to bed till after 10 o'clock because I just didn't. I was, I started to get ready for bed late. And then of course, I wanted to put more heat on my hair and do the pin curls tonight rather than trying to do that this morning. Because I knew I wanted to do face this morning. I put so many pins in here. Did I get them all? Yeah, okay. I'm going to put use some more of this Dove serum. I don't know how this is going to go. So far, so okay. Back, the, this, my back will always be forever crunchy. But that's okay. It's coming out. Coming out nice. I need to like not sweat. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, get it together, girl. It's a little rocky in here. I don't know what was going on. Oh no. Oh no. It's always the front. <laughs> okay. We'll come back to you. Okay, now. 
rather than separating them all one by one did i get this one back here i did i'm gonna just Whoa, ew, <laughs> what are you doing? We were fine. Okay, this side I love, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Am I gonna part this side or am I gonna part this side? I feel like I should part this side. Am I gonna fuck this up by parting my hair? especially since I don't have really any edge control. Don't do it, right? Just do like I do, which is flip it over and then go back, right? Leave it alone. That's fine. This side is also fine. Do I like it? I think that I don't like my edges not being done. So am I going to... Gel has water in it. Edge control control it because you're not going to like it. It's going to be white. Don't do it. You'll mess up the hair. Leave it alone. Wasn't meant for edge control right now. So it's just this. Get rid of that. I sh this little like miscellaneous hair right here gets me, bro. And I shave it all the time and it grows right the fuck back. I don't go away. You just make things unnecessarily awkward. Now why? Why did I do that? Okay. Should I hairspray it? This. It's fine, E. It's fine. Okay. We are almost done. And ready to go. This uh, cardigan off. Just needed to see what it was going to look like. Okay. But I'm going to put it back on once we get it get into the building because I know it's going to be cold. So take this off. I have this belt situation going on because. I needed a belt for these new trousers and I didn't have an adequate one, so I kind of made one. I know, eclectic. I don't, I don't really give a fuck. You know I don't. You can't see my outfit. Let me fix that. Okay, I am literally trying to like speed get ready because I have to leave in nine minutes. Um, anyways, bag. This is my coach bag. I rarely 
wear bags unless it's the whole thing and i guess today qualifies as a thing so and i needed a bag to kind of match the situation um again this belt i needed a belt the only belt that i had had studs on it which i hate i don't even know why or how i have this belt but i hated that it had studs on it so i wrapped it in one of my grandmother's scarves that she gave me and put it on so it's a vibe in the front and it's a party in the back. Um, and then I'll have my sweater once it gets chilly. And then I'm putting my shoes on right now. My Franco Sardos. Put those on. Which I freaking love. These shoes. I'm... 35 now and I just cannot wear heels. The way that my feet are incredibly flat now and have grown, I no longer wear the shoe size that I used to wear, which is a shocker because when did that happen? Um, so yeah, my feet are different now. I can't wear heels. I don't know why I still keep all of my heels in my closet other than they're still pretty and I like to reminisce. I'm not doing it today. It's gonna to be a long day, and I'm just not doing it. So, Franco Sardos, right? Okay, does this look weird? Can't see with these on. These look weird. Does this outfit look weird? Probably, let me see. so it's not like wild no it's fine it's fine I'm fine I did not have breakfast that's not good I need to take my meds though I didn't have breakfast fuck what's today Friday All right, gotta go. All right, just got back home. It's 4.15 and um, glad to be home. It's been a long day. I don't know why I hold, <laughs> I don't know why I hold my eyebrow up like that. It's been a long day. And it's hot as fuck outside. I mean, it hasn't been this hot every other day. And then today of all days, it's like humid and a hundred and it feels, it was like 123 in my car again. Um, but I think it's like what, hundred and hold on. Yeah, I should have just said a hundred and hell out because that's what it feels like. It's a hundred and eleven today. Like, what? We haven't had a hundred and eleven for like weeks now. Where does it come from all of a sudden? Anyways, it's hot. And, um, oh my gosh. Hot. Uh, I've been melting all day. I'm shocked that my makeup has held up as well as it has. I knew I had some mascara here. Somebody could have told me. I asked and they're like, no, it's all good. You could have said, but your eyes are running, bitch. Anyways, this is pretty good considering, considering the, the heat, the sweat. I didn't cry that much just there was a part where i did lose it a little and then after that it was fine
Okay. There we go. Still okay. I'm proud of this hair. The hair is somewhat holding up. Back here is a different story. <laughs> Cause I've just been sweating, but overall it's like cute. Um, still my edges though, I've sweated my edges out, which is fine, but I'm gonna re-roll it. I'm gonna re-roll it tonight and um, like pin curl it to keep these. But my hair, my curls held up and I'm really proud. I'm really proud. So anyways, what am I saying? Today was a day. It was nice though. It was nice. Um, it, although it was a long day, like nothing was super long. You know what I mean? Like each part of the day was not like agonizingly long. The service was just the right amount of time. I, I did not expect to be the only one to speak. I mean, I wasn't, but it was like three total family members that spoke. None of the kids, which I mean, fair. Like, I don't know if it were my mother, if I would be able to speak. I don't know if you're supposed, I don't know how it goes, but I just was not prepared to be the only immediate family member to say something. And um, I don't know what I said, but afterwards, like that's all people kept saying was like how good whatever I said was. And I was just like, okay, kind of doing it for her, not anybody else, but you know, I appreciated it because I just wasn't sure. I think that was part of like me not being able to get to sleep on time. Aside from me procrastinating like I normally do, I just read through and reread it and edited and read it and reread it and edited and read it again, added, took away, corrected things because I just did not want to sound, you know, and uh, it worked out. And so that was good. I'm glad that's over. I'm glad today's over. Um, my grandmother's final resting place is actually really, really pretty. So that made me feel good. And just all the flowers that we had were gorgeous. <laughs> of course, I came home with a plant, um, a peace lily that I'm not sure if somebody bought it. I mean, I'm not sure if somebody brought it like, uh, I don't know where it came from, but it was like amongst all the flowers um, for her funeral. And this was the only plant and it's a huge piece lily. I would show it to you right now, but again, it's hot outside. Baby is wilting. She's hot. She's probably thirsty and she's over it. So she's wilting. So I'll show her a little bit later, but she's huge and beautiful. And I'm gonna find a spot for her somewhere in this apartment. Like I'm officially the crazy plant lady. Like I've been the crazy plant lady, but yeah <laughs> anyways um the flowers were pretty the words that were shared was were really nice um lots of love saw some people that i haven't seen in years which was nice um and that's it that's it um ate a little bit, had some good food. My grandmother's best friend was there and she makes amazing tostadas. Like when we go to her house for like Easter or like Christmas, a Christmas party or a whatever, she makes tostadas and they're so freaking good. So she brought tostadas and um, they hit the spot and she's just like, here to help yourself, get all that you want. And so I, I kind of, I loaded up on my tray. Um, and, um, oh, I need to get that salad out of there. I don't know if I got the right plate because we put all our plates together because we were riding together. 
and I loaded my plate up pretty good and the plate that my mom gave me felt light. So I hope she didn't give me the plate of desserts. I need to check. That, I mean, that's serious. I need to see, hold on. Let's take, let's take all this off. Oh gosh. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it feels really light. But I do smell the salad, so maybe this is it. Girl, I don't know. Is this my plate? Yeah, this is my plate. The cheese melted. I put I put shredded cheese in here for my tostada separately, and it's melted. Bruh. Arizona heat needs to quit. Like, for what? Why do you have to be that, like that? Just too much. Ooh, my apple seeds. Sorry. Ooh, it is not cute at this angle. My apple seeds are going off. The seedlings? Ooh, not a good angle. Hold on. Let me get a brush. Because that is not cute. Maybe it was just that angle. Okay. Oh yeah, mascara. My mascara was something else. My brows, something else. It was so hot out, like I look even darker. Like I tanned while I was outside for split seconds. Okay. <laughs> Girl, some of this hair, look. How? How, Sway? <laughs> Falling. Yeah, I'm gonna quit fucking with it. Not that it matters, because again, I am, I am going to roll it. But like, I like this this look if it would have just stayed what what are you doing up there you didn't want to curl okay all right anyways what was i doing oh i was getting a plate so that i could put the dessert because i put everything on one plate i don't need a bunch of styrofoam for different things. I just put everything on one plate. So I put my desserts out and my tostadas. I'm gonna have that later tonight. And that salad, it was like kale, cabbage, cranberries, pepitas, and something else. Bomb. And I know it was just a um a bagged salad. I don't know what you call it, like those salad mixes that you can get at the grocery store with all the stuff and it comes with the dressing. I don't typically eat those. My brother does. But this particular one, I could tell what it was. And it's it's so fucking good. Like, I kind of want some right now. Save it. Put it in the fridge. E. Let it cool off. And get good again. And then eat it. But I cannot wait. Mm, 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 mm. My fridge is full of stuff, which is why I was telling people at work, like, don't send me anything, don't buy me anything, don't bring me anything. I've got plenty. I am a one person and I'm not eating all of this stuff like I should. So just don't. <laughs> I have so much stuff that I have to deal with, including my own groceries that I just bought. I have fruits and vegetables in here. Girl. Oh my god. Hold on. Question. What does it mean? I think we have a food truck outside today. I just said that I don't need any more food. And I'm not going to go down there. I'm just saying. I think there's a food truck out here today. It might be late. Anyways, what does it mean when your alcohol changes colors? Look at this. 
Last night I had a little teeny tiny bit of Empress Gin and um, watermelon juice. And look at this. If you know Empress Gin, you know that um, it's supposed to be purple because it has that indigo purple butterfly something something or other butterfly pea blossoms they're purple and the gin is supposed to be purple and it was the last time i checked what color is this and what does it mean and should i have not had some last night it's not purple it's blue now and it's, it was supposed to be, st anyways, what does that mean? Because I'm looking at this wine that I've had in the refrigerator and it's a rosé, but I just feel like it was pinker when I first opened it. And again, this has been like weeks. I don't even know if it's still good or not, but. Ooh, a bit of a situation here. My cousins were just talking about Botox and fillers and shit. And I was just like, ugh, why would you do that to your pretty little faces? Here I am talking about. Man. Still tastes like wine. Okay. I'm gonna just kick back for a minute. Okay. Take these shoes off. These shoes are mad cute, but they are hurting my ankles at this point. They're really comfortable though, other than that. Like I walked around all day and they were fine. But like my ankles now, because the tongue is hard and I have them tied a little bit, a little bit snug. Um, yeah, I'm ready for them to come off. Hmm. <sighs> 